after we think, brothers, we can be disconnected from God that we came out of and win. We cannot win disconnected from the thing we came out of. Believers should be walking around yeah. with that boldness. Yeah. But when you build, build. to trust God till the wheels fall off and then if the wheels happen to fall off I'm going to still trust God to replace the wheels or repair the wheels and if God don't give me new wheels I'm going to trust God for some wings but I'm not going to stop trusting God while you're standing giving God praise turn the Bibles to the book of Matthew chapter 22 while you're standing, you can turn your Bibles to the book of Matthew, chapter 22. If you desire to go Facebook Live, you won't be insulted the integrity of this ministry because I want the gospel to go to those who may still be trapped in due to flood waters. You may be able to bless someone to your electronic device if you desire so. Also, on your way out, as we're praying for every biker and every bike on the outside and inside, you can get your blood pressure checked over in the left-hand corner. The Lifesavers 24-hour medical clinic is here to bless you. It's all free. We want to make sure you're riding healthy and not dirty. Amen. This ministry is designed to be in place to be a blessing to the total needs of all mankind. So make sure you see the good doctor who is volunteering her time to make sure we are healthy on this morning. Your Bibles now should be open to the book of Matthew chapter 22. If you're able to stand, stand right there. Journey down to verse number 37 and I'll catch up with you in a second. And today we will preach from the standpoint of my neighbor is my ministry. My neighbor is my ministry and I am ordaining every individual in here with eyes to see, hands to move, feet to walk and a voice to use that you have been called into the ministry. Maybe not with a mic in your hand behind a pulpit in a church, but God has given all of us a ministry assignment. It's call your neighbor. Last week we looked at and focused on our position before, during, and after the storms of life. But today with great joy I can stand and announce to a watching world, the Greenhouse International Church and her partners, we served and assisted over 10,000 people in the wake of Hurricane Harvey. We have been standing on the promise of God, encouraging our neighbors that there is hope after Hurricane Harvey. I dare you to hit your neighbor and say there's hope after the hurricane. One of my heroes in American history is Dr. Martin Luther King, and he says it like this, everyone can be great because anybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to be able to make your subject and verb agree to serve. You only need a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love. Do I have anybody in here who's made their mind up? I'm willing to serve my neighbor. So today we will look at my neighbor is my ministry. And before we read the text in Matthew chapter 22, verse number 37, let me make it crystal clear. Some of the greatest acts of ministry do not necessarily take place in the comfort zone of the four walls of the church or behind a podium or a pulpit in a church. Some of the greatest acts of ministry take place in the midst of hurting wounded people. Sometimes the greatest act of ministry goes unnoticed because it took place on a street corner. Sometimes the greatest act of ministry goes unnoticed because it takes the place in a grocery store line where the person in front of you was struggling on how to get the receipt 
pain and you say, sister, I got you. Move it forward. That's ministry. The, the greatest act of ministry is when you see somebody depressed with their head down and you don't look for a photo op. You just give them a word of encouragement, bless them, and send them on their way. I thank God for social media and the advancement of media, but sometimes we need to turn that stuff off and open up our hearts. My neighbor is my ministry. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 22 verse number 37 through 40, the Bible says Jesus replied that means there was a dialogue taking place. Jesus replied, they were questioning him on what's the greatest commandments uh, to man. Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment to make Make sure you have a relationship with God. We, I think we all got that one. I don't think anybody here would denounce the fact you love the Lord. I don't think anybody would say that I don't care anything about that God stuff. I think we're all in agreement with the greatest commandment. But our problem starts in the second commandment. He says, this is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Uh-oh. Love your neighbor as yourself. And then, then Jesus makes sure they're clear on his, his, his word. He says, all, A-L-L, -L, all the law and all the prophets hang on these two commandments, on these two commandments. So everything hangs on the fact that I love the Lord and I love you. Uh, take, take your seats. I love the Lord and I love you. I, I can't love the Lord if I'm not loving you. I, I can't say I'm God-like if I'm not loving you. I can't say I'm a Christian if I'm not loving you. I, 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 can't, I can't dish your biker group if, if, if I'm really a Christian. I can't put down you if I'm really saying I love the Lord because the Lord himself says, if you really love me, you're going to love each other. In, in this culture, I'm wondering, are we really saved? Because Jesus says all of the other stuff hinge on. You know what a hinge is? A hinge is what's on your door. It allows it to spring open and close. So everything depends on your ability to love him and to love one another. Let me, let me we walk through this this morning if you don't mind if you don't I've been serving physically uh, since the day one of the flood so physically I'm still a little tired but my soul my soul has been anchored so let me break the text down in a way you can clearly understand because I have a responsibility because somebody may have just drifted in here out of the flood waters this is your first time ever hearing the gospel so I have a responsibility to make sure you get it and for those who've been out of church I gotta break it down to the point you can walk out and say I got it and for those who you are so sanctified and holy I'm gonna check your holy but to make sure you're doing what you say you do Jesus, Jesus says, love your neighbor. And number one, he says, love God, because I really can't love my neighbor unless I'm loving God. Because uh, let me tell the truth now, some of y'all hard to love. be honest, I'm going to be honest, I'm one of those hard to love people, I'm complicated, I'm difficult, I'm, I'm moody, I, I, I got issues, you got to love the Lord to be able to stay in connection with me long term, because I, I'm, I'm very aggressive and motivated, and I, I want to save the world, and if you're not rocking like that, you will aggravate me, so you got to love the Lord to love me. But, but number two, number two is, he says, after you got it right with God, then you got to love your neighbor. This is where the church is, is making a mistake at. We were saying we love him, but we don't love them. Come on. Love, love, love your neighbor. Let me break it down. Love is an action word, and we serve our neighbors out of love, not comfort. That's right. Brother Prentice wasn't comfortable all those days early in the morning, late at night, serving the community, but he did it out of love. Oh, all, all those volunteers who show up each day to serve the community, it wasn't because it was comfortable. It was very uncomfortable, but we serve not out of comfort, but out of love. You got too many folks that only do something when it's comfortable, when it's popular, or, or when there's a lot of eyes watching. But will you love, will you serve when no one pats you on the back? Will, will you still help somebody and there's nobody there to tell you thank you? 
Love is an action, action word. We, we honor, watch this, we honor and thank God by loving our neighbors. Yes. We don't just talk about loving and serving because faith without works is dead. We actually put our boots on the ground and work to help our neighbors in their time of need. Because this is something I've discovered, Tangela. I may be up today, but I might be down tomorrow. And the way God sends me help may be dependent on the fact I helped somebody else when they were going through. So if you're selfish, if you didn't help anybody, don't be mocked. The Bible says what's However, man sow it, he shall also reap. If you didn't help nobody over the last 10 to 14 days, when the next hurricane comes, don't look for no. If you didn't love nobody, don't expect love that ring your doobie. We must love our neighbors. And then watch, watch this, because when Jesus starts start spitting this kind of knowledge, there's going to always be somebody in the crowd, MC Sure, that will rise up and be a critic. I, I told one of, I, I think it was CNN, when they were interviewing me, I said, you know, I've discovered something. If I give somebody a million dollars, there will be professional complaints and say, he should have gave me a million and one. Some people just never, ever be satisfied. No matter what you do for them, they will never, ever be, they will always write, and I call them professional complainers. So we have a professional complainer here in the text. Just look at another interpretation of this same text in Luke chapter 10, verse number 25. They didn't tell you, I'm a Bible preacher. Luke chapter 10, look at Luke chapter 10, verse 25 through 29. This is what happens on one occasion, an expert in the law. It's going to always be some smarty but trying to question the, what's going on. Uh -huh. The expert in the law stood the test of Jesus. The teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? It is written in the law, he replied. How do I read it? Jesus answered him. He answered Jesus, rather, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbors as yourself. See, many of us know the Bible or we live in the Bible. You can quote it at the family reunion to make yourself look good, but if you still gossiping, lying, and out cussing and fighting everybody, you have the instructions to get to the place, but I'm not following your instructions, so I stay lost. And many show the church Sunday after Sunday, lost is all I do. So Jesus says, you've answered correctly, do this and you will live. But then he wanted to justify his actions. Because we all have a tendency to justify. Yes, we do. Mm. Yes, we do. And so he says, well, Jesus, who is my neighbor then? Who is my who is my neighbor? Who 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 is my neighbor? Have you ever wondered who who is Jesus referring to? He says, "Love your neighbor." Who who is my neighbor? Let me break it down to you. My neighbor is black. My neighbor is brown. My neighbor is white. My neighbor is every race, color, and creed that was created by the same God that created me. I can't pick no. Just like I couldn't pick and choose who my mom and daddy was, I can't pick and choose who my neighbors are. If God created them, they became my neighbor. Hurricane Harvey proves how big my neighborhood was. That's right. I wish I could have taken a, a, a visual picture, but I'll never forget this image. There was a, a big truck outside, and on top of the truck, there was a, a Muslim guy, and I was down at the bottom. The Muslim guy handed me a box, a Christian, and I handed the box to a Caucasian brother, and he handed the box to a female, and the female handed it to a Hispanic brother, and the Hispanic brother handed it to a senior citizen, and the senior citizen handed it to a millennium. It, it, was, it, was, it was everything you could think of passing the box from... And the, and the law said, this is how heaven going to be. That's, right. That's your neighborhood. Stop talking about a black church or a white church or a brown church. That's not of God. God is one God. The creator of all the universe. Everybody is my neighbor. Yes, I'm pro-black, but everybody is my neighbor. I'm not anti-anybody. We are neighbors. We are family. We are better and stronger together. Amen. When all bikers and all MCs and all churches and all people come together, we cannot be stopped. That's right. And the devil realized that also. That's why he calls it a vision. Keeping you in some kind of ruckus so you can stop from 
forcing him out of business. Watch this. We all may have come here to this place we call America on different boats. But when that rain started falling, we all was on the same boat. It didn't matter if you were gay or straight, Democrat or Republican, rich or poor. If you lived in a gay community or if you were already homeless, when that water fell, 300,000 folks became homeless in a few hours. So the next time you snub your nose down at somebody, remember if it were not for the grace of God, dad, go. I was upstairs doing one point, taking care of some business, and one of the members of the church ran up. Pastor, Pastor, I, I don't like this. I said, What's wrong? What's wrong? Come down. I say, we, we got some people, and, and, and they're volunteers, and they're not part of the church, and they're giving the black people more than they're giving the Hispanic people, and that's not right. I said, You sure right? Let me go downstairs and check them. That's not how we roll. Amen. If you walk through that door, you became my neighbor, my brother, my sister. And, if, if, if the black woman get two two brushes, the Hispanic woman get two two brushes. That's right. I, 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 I wish you understood what I'm saying. I wish you we we got to get to the point where, where love wins. We, not, we may not be all the same race, but if we run in the same race, we're all in the same game. Amen. One day, they, they post the struggle is real. It's not just a black struggle or a white struggle or a brown struggle. It's a people struggle. And we better when we together. Amen, Pastor. This is my personal prayer after Hurricane Harvey. Yes. Because a distant memory that we remember to never allow our neighborhoods to be reduced back to the color of our skin or the faith we choose to worship in. Can, 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 can I get real deep on you real quickly? Most of you are only Christian because your mama took you to a Baptist church in the hood growing up. You have no idea what Christian fundamental principles are. No more you know what a Muslim is or a Jew is or a Catholic. You just been going there because that's where your mama them took you. Uh, you, got, you got real quiet on me. You got real quiet on me. You got, you got, see, you, you're fighting battles over stuff you don't even understand. It's like I tell the Bloods and the Crips on the corner. I say, brother, why are you killing your brother over a spot? Neither one of y'all have title deed to. Watch this. Look at Luke chapter 10, verse 36 and 37. I'm almost through. So they questioning Jesus about this neighbor situation. So Jesus, Jesus, I, I love Jesus clap back better than anybody I know. Je Jesus have a clap back that'll make you sit up and straighten up. That's right. So they start questioning Jesus. So he says, okay, he, he gave a parable. You know that's a good Samaritan parable. He gave a parable in Luke chapter 10. He, he closed the parable and said, which of these three, and I'll break down the three in just a second, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell in the hands of the robbers? The expert in the law, the one who think he know everything, he replied again, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus tells to him, go and do likewise. Yeah. Oh, my neighbor is my ministry. Let's just break this down. Luke chapter 10. I'm going to give you EA's version of the Good Samaritan parable. Don't leave saying the preacher misquote the Bible. Tell you up front. I'm giving you my remix of it. Luke chapter 10. Hurricane Harvey hits H-Town. Leaving many people on the side of a road in a bad situation. There are two tests taking place while, while people are on the side of the road in a bad situation. The first test is for those who are still standing and walking. And our test is how will we respond to those who've been hurt by Hurricane Harvey? The test for those who are left with nothing, will they continue to trust God through it all? And will they declare in the midst of the car gone, the house gone, the clothes gone? I was in a drive through yesterday. Uh, a gentleman said, Pastor, I lost my Bentley and my Porsche, but I'm going to be all right. Oh, my God. That's good. I said, Brother, I, I got some folks who walked in the church with no shoes on. 
surely you're going to be all right. But what about the sister who... Ha the test is, how will we minister to those on the side of the road? And those on the side of the road, will we minister in such a way that we will give them hope that there is hope after harvest? So then watch it. Jesus can say there were three different scenarios. Which three would you choose to be? Number one, one man passed by the situation, watch this, with the ability to help. He had the ability to help, but he refused to help. Uh, doctor, I think it's against the law for you to see someone wounded and act like you didn't see him. You, you, you by law, you must render aid. But by spiritual principle, if we really who we say we are, it should be a law that if I see my brother or sister on the side of the road dying, that I stop and render aid. That's what a Christian would do. Amen. See, we must never forget we are blessed to be a blessing to our neighbors. God didn't bless us so, so we can Photoshop and Instagram and, and, and tell folks how we roll it. And God didn't bless you for you to high camp. God bless you for you to be a blessing to your neighbor. And if your blessings are not blessing your neighbors, you're really not blessed. You're really cursed because you really don't have that stuff you're claiming. That stuff really have you. Preach that. Preach. Because most of it just got you in high debt anyway. Amen. God says what you do for the least of them, you do for me. The second man, the second man, another man, he passed by the situation on his way to church, y'all. But he was too selfish to serve. So he ignored the needs. He got real spiritual. He, like he was reading a text or something. Was, I'm busy. God. I got, it's, it's almost... I'm, I got to the church. I'm, I'm running late to church. He, he was so busy with church work, he forgot to be the church. Yeah. Many of us fall prey to that. Always on our way to church, but never being the church. Ignoring the needs of our people. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm proud to say that when the rain fell, no one questioned how was the Greenhouse International Church and E.A. Deckardham going to respond. Uh, everybody's assumed that man gonna open up that church. I don't if it's water, he gonna suck the water out and let the people come in. They just and I, I like the fact that that's the reputation we roll with. It we're gonna respond when responding needs to be. We're gonna be what I call a spiritual first responder. Amen. Because church is more than just coming inside of a building. The greatest commandment number two is to love your neighbor. You can't love your neighbor and lock your neighbor out. You can't love your neighbor and ignore your neighbor. You love your neighbor by serving your neighbor. That's right, Pastor. Church, let's not be so busy running to the church that we don't have time to be the church. And then it's this third brother, this third brother. Yeah, y'all yeah, watch me. This, this third brother, we call him the Good Samaritan. That's what I call the real church folks. He stops and serves and sacrifices for his neighbor who watch this girl, who happens to be from a different hood. Yeah. They weren't even from the same block, but, but he stopped, he served, and he sacrificed for his neighbor because he realized my neighbor is bigger than my neighborhood. Yeah. Church, we must stop. We must stop. We must stop. I can't see you crying and keep going. We must stop. I can't keep wearing the label of a Christian. Dick and Joe, this is why I'm losing popularity amongst my clergy friends, because I'm saying to President Donald Trump, if a church would not serve its community, they should not be tax exempt. What they tax exempt for? We're here to serve, not to stockpile. I'm not tax exempt to get a Bentley. I'm not tax exempt to get a plane. I'm not tax exempt to get designer suits. I'm tax exempt to do the work of the Lord. And if I'm not doing the work of the Lord, I don't need to be tax exempt. So we must stop and make sure we'll be in the church upon this rock. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Can your community trust you? Stop ignoring 
Sister been wearing shades the last two meetings. The sun haven't shined in a long time. Stop ignoring the sun. Children have changed their behavior patterns. Stop ignoring the sun. Because they stop. Stop. And serve. Sir. Serve not out of comfort, serve out of love. I love my people too much to ignore the needs of my people. And God is redefining who I classify as my people. God told me to stop saying my black people. That's right. And that's a challenge for me because I'm pro black. Yes. I'm the dude who stands with his fists. <laughs> Challenging the establishment, but God says, as you challenge the establishment, challenge it for all people. Because if anybody is under, everybody is under. So I got to raise it. the black man, the white man, the yellow man, the black sister, the brown sister, any brother, any sister that's down, the church must stop and serve. And what I like about this good Samaritan, he didn't stop and take a he stayed until service was completed. Yes, he did. Wow. Stop and serve. Stop and serve. And when you stop and serve, stop serving in selfish glory. Look at me. I gave him a slice of bread. Well, you just got your reward by the likes you got on social media. You can't pay me for what I need God to do. So I got to stop being worried about if you like me or not and make sure that I'm doing what God has called me to do. Somebody holler back at the preacher, my neighbor is my ministry. How well are you serving? And then finally, number three is you have to serve and sacrifice. Amen. Well, the prison will be messy, but I was eavesdropping one of your couples. So you say, right now I've been off work since this flood, and my money kind of funny, so I'm not serving out of abundance of money. I'm serving out of an abundance of caring and time. Yeah. That's See, right. You don't have to be the richest cat on the block to serve. Sometimes the greatest, the woman who's down to her last, she sold it, and God said she'll never be broke another day of her life. The widow woman was down and out, about to die, had nothing but a crumb for a cake left, and she sold it in sacrifice. And every time she went to her cupboard, her icebox, her refrigerator, there, there was something in there. See, when you serve God out of sacrifice, God says, No, I gotta bless them. And I don't know about you, but I wanna be in that line, but God says, I gotta bless him. I gotta bless her. My neighbor, he is my ministry. And if I want the blessings of God, if I want the heavens to open up and the blessings to pour down, I gotta get off my butt. I, I gotta stop making excuses. I gotta stop walking over people. And I gotta make my mind up. Stop. Serve and sacrifice and watch God show up. And Jesus says, which of these three passed the test? Which one? The smarty pan to the third one. And Jesus says, go and do like. Amen. So I close up my book challenging you to go and do likewise. Amen. To go and bless somebody. Yeah. Another image I'll never forget as we close. We are shut down for the night, wrapping up, trying to get home. Family came to the door. I looked down the little baby with a diaper on. No shirt, no shoes. The sign said closed, but the assignment said open.